Alrighty, what's going on everyone? It's Garland here, bringing you the ultimate Soulbinder Damnation uh, build and guide for Mod 10. Uh, just a few disclaimers, uh, this isn't the all god build okay guys I, I know a lot of you have been looking up to me to provide you know the best build currently out there uh with mod 10 being introduced uh the warlock has been split into two groups let's do a minor introduction for uh the soul binder damnation uh basically uh the dps is still viable in dungeons and group play uh however it is not the best dps in the game in my opinion anymore uh, it is still usable. I did do numerous tests. Uh, I was doing anywhere from 90 million to 75 million in Castle Never Runs. Uh, it's still very viable DPS. However, like I said, it is not the best DPS. It still does have incredible high survivability. Uh, you will basically very rarely die, uh, even with the new... Uh, zones and everything in mod 10 uh, your survivability is very high uh, just a shout out um, to all the warlocks that did help me uh, Fernu, uh, Dagasa, Nensu, uh, Lucid, Obsidian and the numerous other warlocks that did help test everything and put everything together uh, so let's jump right in uh, let's talk about the races uh, Tefling, <clears throat> Dragonborn, and Human are going to be your three main options. Uh, Tefling and Dragonborn are basically going to increase your overall DPS with your passive abilities. Uh, Human, you're going to get your extra three feats. Let's quickly talk about the statistics since it's easy. Normal things apply. You're going to stack your Constitution and your Charisma. Uh, your initial roll should be, I think, about 17 and 17 for each. I th I, I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember if you can get 18, 18 on your initial rolls, but I think 17, 17 is the highest split. So you do want to stack your constitution and your charisma. Now let's flop over to the gear. Uh, currently, best end slot is going to be up for debate. Uh, a lot of people still say that the Elemental Dragonflight is still going to be a good choice, and that is just due to the new Relic gear coming from Fangbreaker Island and the total upkeep cost and all of that shenanigans. Uh, I personally will be using the Dragonflight until they decide to change the Relic gear. I do have the Relic boots. I actually have two sets of the boots. Um, if we look at it really quickly here, uh, you can see at Tier 2, uh, it is combat level or item level 145 compared to the 142 Dragonflight. And the statistics are a little increased. You are going to gain more HP, more power, more crit, uh, and more defense, of course. And now this is only tier 2. Now this does go to tier 3, which will turn the item level into 150, and you will get increased stats again, which should outperform the Dragonflight by... by However, the combat time is only, I believe, two hours on the Tier 3. So basically, you're going to have to farm the uh, Vonin Blode uh, non-stop. Uh, a lot of people disagree with this, and that's why they don't want to use the new gear set. They've tried this before with the Black Ice model, and it did not work. Uh, so they either need to increase the overall time frame that uh, you can actually use the new gear, or simply no one's going to want to do it, no one's going to want to use it. Uh, so for now, yes, I will be rocking Elemental Dragonflight until they do decide to change the Relic gear. Uh, your Twisted Weapons uh, is also going to be up for de uh, debate. There is a new Artifact Weapon set coming out in uh, 10.5. Um, unfortunately, we can't test it yet. Uh, I do believe it is on the preview server. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the Combat Power, or the... Uh, the set bonus power for the new artifact set basically gives you a 10% DPS increase. Um, but you have to use your shadow slip to activate it. Uh, and it also has a counterpart to the defensive one. If you use a daily power first, you'll activate the other one. So best in, best in slot for the artifact weapons is going to be up in the air for now. Uh, I'm going to continue to wear the Twisted set. Uh, I will compare it to the new set when it becomes available. 
but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, your three-piece set, uh, your necklace, your waist, and your artifact. As you can see, I'm still rocking the Lost Moth. Uh, the best in slot is going to be the Orcus. You are going to want to get your Orcus set and refine it, which I'm working on. Still hasn't dropped for me personally, unfortunately. But yes, Orcus will be the best in slot for your three-piece set. Now, your artifacts will remain uh, the same from the previous mod. You're going to either use the Sigil or the Will of Elements in your active slot, uh, your Thane Book of the Dead, and either your Tiamat Orb or your Lantern or something that has crit power or armor pen on it for your remaining artifacts. Your Shirt and Pants, uh, anything that's 145. Uh, for mod 10, you're going to want to get your Everfrost resistant uh, armor kits and put them on these. Um, you can get the new shirt and pants, however, they, they are actually lower item score than the gemmed. Uh, I believe the new stuff is actually 140, whereas these are 145. Uh, but you can get your Everfrost uh, kits on these. Well, let's talk about your armor enchantments. We are still going to rock the Transcendent Negation. Can't go wrong with this. 3% damage resistance and 1% incoming healing and 1% recovery. And it stacks 10 times. So 30% DR, 10% healing, and 10% recovery for 9 seconds. You cannot go wrong with this. Let's talk about your weapon uh, enchantment. And we are still rocking the Transcendent Vorpal. Uh, it is up for the debate if the Dread is going to be now better. Uh, I believe that the Vorpal is still going to be the best for Damnation, uh, just because as Damnation you're going to be using your Immolation Spirits uh, a lot more. A lot more than you were, put it that way. Uh, and the Dread does not have any effect on your Immolation Spirits, whereas the Vorpal does. So, uh, in my opinion, best in slot for your weapon enchantment will be the Vorpal. Um, as far as your other enchantments go, uh, your utility slots don't really matter, but I stack Fey Blessings and Dragon Hordes. I believe I have three Fey Blessings and two Dragon Hordes in all my utility slots. Uh, for your defensive slots, you're going to want to stack Dark Enchantments. Uh, you want to stack your Life Still. Um, you can stack HP or defense, it is up to you. However, if you want the survivability that this build brings, you are going to want to use the life still. And then for your offensive, it's going to be up to you. I personally stack power, uh, which is radiance, uh, because I get my critical from elsewhere now. So you are going to want to either stack radiance or azores, depending on how much critical strike you are currently at. And then uh, your armor reinforcement kits, we are going to rock the critical strike on your head, armor, uh, arms, and feet. And then we are going to rock the action point gain on your neck, ring, ring, and belt. As far as ring goes, I'm currently using the rising precision plus four with the rising power plus four. And I will explain why further in the video, but for right now... Uh, if you can get plus fives of either of these, that's obviously ideal. However, I have the plus fours of the rising, so we are going to use our rising on our character for right now. That's going to be about it, covering the gear and everything. Let's move on to the actual feats and the build itself. Starting out, we're going to toss one into an Energizing Curse. Uh, you can toss more into here if your AP gain is low. Uh, I prefer the 9% increased HP over the AP gain as I have very high AP gain. Of course, you're going to take 3 out of 3 for your critical chance by 3%. Followed by your uh, Empowered Rituals, which is going to be 6% more overall damage. And then we're going to move up to here and go a 5 out of 5 out of Determined Casting, which is 10% reduction. And then we're going to finish off with the critical severity, 15%, and two points into Blood Pack. Now, if you are going to roll a human, you are going to get three additional feats. Um, I would suggest you put the, the remaining three feats into Blood Pack so you get that 5% uh, increase. However, if your life still is lacking, you can put the three 
points into here, which increases your life still by 3%. Uh, also, if you really want to, you could put your three points into here. This, now this will increase damage dealt by Lesser Curse. Now with mod 10, Lesser Curse has a huge buff increase. Uh, the Lesser Curse damage was buffed by 50% across the board. Uh, this will increase at another 30% for Lesser Curse. Uh, that's gonna be up to you. Um, if you want the three points here, you want three points here, or if you want the three points here. Uh, that is if you will uh, do play a human. Um, moving on to the Damnation Tree. Uh, we are not taking Parting Blasphemy anymore. Uh, there were changing s changes to Parting Blasphemy. Uh, most Warlocks were using Parting Blasphemy because it did do damage to you. So if you were using the Young Yeti Companion, uh, it was proccing all the time because Parting Blasphemy was actually doing damage to you. Uh, however, this isn't the case anymore. Parting Blasphemy does not do any damage to you. So it basically is kind of useless. I mean, when a curse is removed from a target, you do 50% uh, of your weapon damage to that target. Uh, or weapon damage is only like 1,600. So, you know, if you really want to do uh, 700 damage to a target when a curse is removed, yeah, it's it's honestly not worth it. This, this is a useless feat. Uh, See, so we're ever going to take 5 out of 5 for Relentless Curse. Uh, when your Warlock's Curse is removed from a target... Uh, it's a 100% chance to be afflicted with Lesser Curse. So if you forget to reapply your Warlock's Curse to a target and the target's Warlock's Curse has expired, it will automatically get a Lesser Curse on it and deal all that Lesser Curse damage. It's just a better option than the Parting Blasphemy anymore. Uh, we're going to move on to Spark Binder, which is your Immolation Spirits buff. Uh, your Immolation Spirits is going to last 5 seconds longer now. And it's also going to gain 25% of your maximum hit points. Uh, moving on, we're going to take uh, Spirit Fire. Uh, foes near your Soul Puppet now also take 75% of weapon damage as fire damage. Uh, nothing big deal here. It's just a little minor DPS tweak. Uh, now we are going to take Warding Spirits over Burning Puppets. Uh, Warding Spirits basically is when your Soul Puppet is active, you take 10% 10 10 less damage, which just makes you even more tankier than you already are. Uh, Burning Puppets does involve Lesser Curse, uh, but I just didn't see it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a good feat, and if we weren't going to go the Dark Reverie route, we would end up taking this feat, most likely, if we were going to go full Damnation. Moving on, we're going to take Ghastly Commander over Wrathful Souls now. Uh, Ghastly Commander is when you have a Soul, Pup to, Soul Puppet active, you personally deal 10% 10, 10 more damage and 2% more life still. Uh, Wrathful Souls, uh, your Soul Puppet deals 100% more damage. We don't really care about our Soul Puppet DPS anymore. Uh, the Soul Puppet has been fixed. Uh, the DPS on it is still nice, however, it's not what it used to be. 100% uh, more damage on it, we don't really care. Your Soul Puppet is no longer uh, a main DPS source anymore. Uh, and it also heals you 10% uh, of the damage. So if they're hitting for 1,000, you know, uh, you're going to get 100 um, HP healed to you, which is so insignificant. I really wish they would have buffed us a, le a little more. Maybe it should have been 50% healing toward you. Uh, however, that's not the case. Uh, and then, of course, your last in the Damnation Tree is your Soul Desecration, which means your Soul Puppet is permanent. Uh, he will not go away. Uh, if he does die, you will be able to automatically recast one every 15 seconds. Now, there is going to be two current ways to play uh, the Soul Binder Damnation. Uh, the way that I'm going to bring to you guys is more of a group support way, and it is going to be the Dark Revelry way. So our last 15 points we are going to take in Temptation, which is going to be Hope Stiller, which we don't care, just increases your life still some more. Uh, Vampiric Sparks, every time you have full sparks, you're gaining 0.5%. Uh, life still, so you just keep stacking your life still with this. And then finally, this is the reason we go into it, is going to be your Dark Revelry. Uh, now this is a group buff, it does not affect you, however. Uh, so if you want to play more of a support damnation build, this is the route you're going to take. Um, basically every time you life still, you're going to buff your group 20%. Uh, 20% power and movement speed. Now, as I mentioned, there is another way. Uh, you would take, you could either take Burning Puppets, or you can take Wrathful Souls for five of your points, and then you want to come up here and take 
Uh, it doesn't really matter if you want to take Daughter's Promise or if you want to take Chronicle Promise. It doesn't matter which one you want to take, but you do want to get Burning Souls, uh, which is a 9% increased DPS to yourself. Um, I have played both ways. Uh, the way Mod 10 is going, it's very team-oriented for Mod 10, especially when we do unlock Fangbreaker Island. So I do believe the best current build for a Soulbinder Damnation is going to be the less selfish route and you're going to want to take the dark reverie route as opposed to the 10 percent dps that you would get yourself so that's actually going to wrap up the feats uh we're going to be moving on uh until the actual powers uh right off the bat we're going to go down and your at wheels are going to be hand of blight and essence defiler uh both at wheels did get a significant increase um they have a less uh, casting time now, so their overall DPS has increased. Uh, your Essence Defiler, of course, is how you're going to be generating most of your snack, your stacks for uh, Soul Scorch. Uh, we're going to continue to play that um, debuff role by using Dread Theft as Damnation. Now, Dread Theft did get a change. Uh, basically, anytime your laser beam is on a target for a boss um, for instance your teammates will do increased damage to that so it is a buff debuff kind of spell now uh, it will still demolish uh, trash mobs as far as AOE goes it still does do high amounts of damage however the main aspect for dread theft now is that you want to kind of uh, chain it with if you're using a garden fighter once he pops his fray make sure your dread theft is on the boss that way everyone is going to do increased dps to the boss itself so it is a different game mechanic now it is a different uh, i mean dread theft did do that before but now it has been significantly increased to actually uh, be appropriate for the content so we are still rocking dread theft uh, now your bread and butter is going to be your soul scorch as far as DPS goes. Uh, once you get your full sparks, you want to possibly think about uh, using your soul scorch on boss encounters. And then finally, uh, we are going to rock three different spells. Uh, either Blades of the Vanquished Armies, which is still pretty good. Uh, I use it for clearing trash mobs. Uh, you can still use your Warlock's Bargain if you still need the, high, the life still rating on it. And also, you can use Hadar's Grasp. Hadar's Grasp does a significant amount of damage. It is a DOT. Uh, so if you want to use Hadar's Grasp for boss battles or Warlock's Bargain for boss battles, that's going to be up to you. As far as dailies go, we are still rocking Tyrannical Curse and Immolation Spirits. However, in my opinion, Immolation Spirits is going to be used a lot more than Tyrannical. They have just totally wrecked Tyrannical. Tyrannical is down the tubes, guys. Uh, the mechanics of it have changed. The damage on it has changed. Uh, you can't target more than one with Tyrannical now. Uh, you're going to basically be popping Immolation Spirits. When you enter a boss battle, you want to pop your Immolation Spirits, then pop your Sigil once you get full AP again, then maybe go into Tyrannical uh, for boss battles. Um, as far as rotations and everything go, there will be a separate video that I will link in the description as far as doing uh, rotations. That will be in a separate video. All the links and uh, the guides and everything will be in the description. So there will be a rotation build video and then the link to MMO Minds, the written out version of the guide will also be a link in the description as far as your uh, personals go we are still going dust to dust for the ap gain you can't go wrong with it and then of course we are going to be using all consuming curse which now actually works when you have rank four the lesser curse damage 50 percent that stacks on the 50 percent increase already um and we do use all consuming curse for our uh, features which I did forget to mention actually let's hop back over here real quick I totally forgot this uh, so your artifact powers uh, we are going to use essence to Fowler for the 8% increased damage and then all-consuming curse which basically gives your crit severity 5% when you're using all-consuming curse so I did forget to mention that 
Uh, now there are some variations that you can use. If you want to go into broods of brood of Hadar, it's a good choice. Or if you want to use a cursed souls, is also a good choice as far as your dailies goes. If you don't want to uh, finagle with tyrannical curse, uh, tyrannical curse is still good DPS. It's just the way it's set up right now is is not good. It needs changed again. But that's going to wrap it up for the powers. I will go in more depth on the powers in the actual rotation video so make sure you do check out the rotation video like i said it will be linked in the description and now let's go over to our boons uh, nothing has changed here uh, we got charndar uh, we are going to take the 400 power we got the 400 crit strike uh, three percent action point gain can't go wrong there uh, and then elven ferocity uh, 20k arcane damage when you're striking a foe and then finally, Elvish Fury, 135 power, 445 seconds, and it stacks 30 times, which is just ridiculous. Let's move on to Dreadring. We are going to take the 250 power and 250 movement. Now you can take the 250 critical. Uh, this is going to be up to you. Whatever stats you're lacking, uh, I'm able to make my critical strike high enough to where it needs to be so I can stack the power here. However, if you do need the critical strike, you are going to want to take this. Uh, the 400 life still over the regen, uh, the 3% resistance ignored, which stacks on your armor pen um, instead of the deflect chance. Uh, Shadow touch over the healing because we have saw we have such high life still that the heal we don't need any more healing. Um, we're actually going to take the necronic damage. And then finally, Rampaging Madness. Uh, every character should take Rampaging Madness. It doesn't matter what class you are. Ramp Rampaging Madness is where you're going to want to be. This is the uh, 4,000 power, 4,000 life still, and 4,000 regen. Let's move on to Ice Windell. Uh, 400 AoE resist we don't care about. We are going to be taking the 400 combat advantage. I uh, don't care about the stamina game. We are going to take the 400 incoming healing bonus, which works with your life still. Uh, we now this is going to be a um, no-brainer here. Uh, the 400 recovery, who cares? I mean, 400 recovery would be nice, but when you have anything involving crit severity, crit severity all the way. So the 2% crit severity there. Uh, the 2,000 power based on how much stamina or guard you are missing. Uh, you're going to be moving a lot more in this mod than you were in previous mods. You're always going to be using your sa your shadow slit. Uh, so now you're going to gain 2,000 power based on how much stamina you have. So if you're completely depleted, uh, you're going to have that full 2,000 power bonus, um, which we don't care about this. The cold shoulder, cold shoulder, we don't care about. Reduce damage of their next attack up to 2K. It's more of a PV PvP issue, so we don't care about that. Uh, Winner's Bounty, a chance to gain 10% bonus action points when killing a monster. This procs all the time. I highly suggest you get it. Um, no matter if you're using the Sigil of the Devoted or you have a high AP gain, this procs all the time. You're always going to be full AP, which basically means all the dailies you can cast. Moving on to the Underdark here. We're going to go 400 power over the 400 defense with the HP gain. Uh, 400 crit and more HP gain. Uh, combat advantage damage is going to be increased by 10%. Uh, now, okay, so I've mentioned this before, but, you know, stamina, it's better than control effects. Like, the control effects in this game do not last very long. So 5% shorter, we don't really care. At least we can get 5% uh, stamina faster, so we can use it again. And then finally, I chose the 10% damage versus demons rather than demons do 5% less damage to you. I prefer the more damage over the less damage taken. Tyranny of Dragons, uh, 400 power, uh, 400 crit, 400 armor pen. No, no brainer there. Uh, 400 life steal rating over the regen, and then finally the crit severity, which I still am missing my final one. Uh, I still need to farm. Uh, Tiamat and finally finish this to get that full 8%, but I do have the 6.5 currently. Uh, if you are in a guild, you're going to take your power, uh, your power boon, oops, uh, and then you will take your lifesteal boon. You can use the hit point boon if you really want to. If you have it maxed out, it is 32k HP, which is a lot of additional uh, HP. However, we're going to take the lifesteal. Uh, utility doesn't matter, we're just going to pick the uh, mount speed bonus. 
Moving on to the maze engine, we got uh, 5% life steal severity. We got the 400 combat advantage bonus. Uh, more action point gain. 3% faster. I mean, like I said, you know, my AP gain is so fast that it's just outrageous. And then finally, uh, Baphomet's Might. When striking a foe, you have a chance to gain 2,000 crit bonus. Uh, can't go wrong with that, really. Elemental Evil. We're going to be taking the 300 power and 2k HP over the defense. 4% uh, life steal severity and 2k hit points over the regen. And we're going to take the 400 crit strike, 2k HP over the recovery. And then finally, Gel of Retribution. Uh, when taking damage, you have a chance to heal up to 24k. Uh, this was the best option out of these. Um, and only because this is the critical strike one. Uh, I could have taken the recovery run if I really wanted, but this doesn't really pop that often. I mean, it does pop once in a while, but it doesn't proc enough to to show a significant difference. So I just took the the crit strike one. Uh, let's move on to the mod ten stuff. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't show up in the boon, so I actually have to go over here. So we have the options of two percent crit. Or, I'm sorry, 2% life steal severity and 1k HP, which we are going to take over the control resistance. We have the 400 incoming bonus plus 2% Everfrost resistance, which we are going to take. And then we have Icy Wrath, a chance when taking damage to gain up to 2,000 bonus damage on next attack. Or you gain up to 2,000 recovery based on how much stamina or guard you have. I'm not exactly sure which one I am going to take. Most likely I'm going to take the 2,000 recovery over the 2,000 bonus damage. Because 2,000 bonus damage is just, it's insignificant. It's not a lot. You know, 2,000 damage is not a lot of damage. i rather actually have the 2,000 recovery. Uh, Vengeful Heat or Glacial Strength. Uh, your max HP is increased by 3,200 and 2% Everfrost damage. Resistance, of course, this is all resistance. Or, uh, when you kill a foe, you have a chance to do up to 2,000 fire damage to all nearby. Okay, so we don't care. Okay, we don't care about your 2,000 damage. We're going to obviously want the 3,200 HP increase. And then finally, let's look at the last tier. Chill of Winter. Uh, 50 stacks, you're going to do a burst of 10k damage. It's garbage. Uh, healing warmth, your healing spells have a chance to damage up to 5 enemies near the target, 4k damage. Uh, the Titan's Affinity, healing potions now heal you for 10% more. And Frozen Reflection, when you deflect an attack, you deal up to 5,000 damage to your attacker. These are all garbage. Every single one of these is bad. Okay, I'm very unimpressed with the new campaign boons for this mod. I honestly don't know which one of these I'm going to take because they're all equally bad. Uh, I might take Chill of Winter just just because it is 10k damage, I guess. Maybe it'll stack with my other damage, but whatever. It's still, you have to have 50 stacks of it before it even procs in the 10k damage. It's That's horrible. Uh, and these are also bad. You know, your healing spells, 4k damage, whoop de freaking do. Uh, Titan's Affinity, Healing Potions, you know, they heal you for 10%. I don't use Healing Potions. Um, and then, like I said, finally, the Deflection. Don't care about Deflection. So I really don't know. Which I'm probably just going to end up taking Chill of Winter. That's going to wrap it up for the booms, guys. Let's move on to the Companions. Uh, still pretty basic of what we're going to be using here. Uh... The Fire Archon for the 7% damage increase with any enemy lower than 50% health. Uh, we are still rocking the Siege Master, which is a 4% damage increase. Uh, if you're on the Stronghold, it's an 8%. Uh, the Air Archon is going to be... Uh, you do 5% extra damage... Uh, to enemies that have been damaged already. So even if an enemy takes one, one damage, this will go into effect. And then the Aaron Yes of Belial is 10% uh, crit severity. And now finally, let's move on into our legendary companion, which, uh, in my in my opinion, is going to be the best companion in the game for any DPS class. However, it's been argued, and let's just get into it. So, of course, you're going to get your three rank bondings, your uh, rank 12 bondings. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice that it doesn't have three offensive slots, and you're going to immediately dismiss this companion. I will explain why. 
Um, so yes, you're going to have two offensive slots, one defensive slots, and he does have three ring slots. Uh, I chose the sudden rings. We're going to use the sudden precision with power and life steal in the offensive and defense. I have the sudden life steal with radiant and dark, more power, more life steal. And then finally, I have a, a plus three brutality, which, believe it or not, I've been playing this game forever. Forever I've been playing this game. I've done Demogorgon more times than I can count, and I've never pulled a plus four brutality ring. It just will not drop. Um, I mean, which is not a huge deal because, honestly, I don't need the the defensive slot on this ring right now anyway because it's just more life still, and my life still is like 70%. So... It's not a huge deal. However, I would like to get all plus fives of these so I can have double offensive slots. Uh, now, it's a huge debate on whether what best in slot is going to be for companion gear. I've seen debates where the sudden rings are the best. I've seen people put the rising rings on their companion and then the sudden rings on their person. And I've also seen people use the Loyal Avenger gear or the Adorable Bites gear, depending on what platform you play. You know, PC has the Loyal Avenger gear, whereas the console has uh, the Adorable Bites gear. I'm going to go with the Sudden Rings. These burst um, effects significantly will increase your overall performance. Um, I think... Base, my base power is like 37k. With everything proccing and everything going on on my character, I can get up to about 73k power. That's only self buff. That's not including my group buffs and you know all the debuffs going on and everything else. I personally can get my power to 73k uh, with this current setup. I've tried the Rising Rings on it. This companion, the Con Artist, will proc the Rising Rings enough to get the bonus. Uh, however, like I said, I just feel that the Sudden Rings do actually outperform uh, anything else. I've tested it more times than I can imagine. Um, I've tested the Rising Rings versus the Sudden Rings. I prefer the Sudden Rings. If you prefer the Rising Rings, by all means, play the way you want. You know, this is just a very uh, opinionated video. Um, I can't tell you what to do, uh, but... In my own testing, in my own personal opinion, the Sudden Rings are going to be best. Uh, now, the Con Ordis is very cheap. Uh, I think it costs two gold. It's actually a starter pet. It costs two gold. I think it's the best pet in the game. Best companion in the game. Now, if we look at its powers, this is why. The final strike of, of Wicked Strike now shreds 10% of the target's defense. Okay? That's a 10% debuff. That's crazy. All right? That's what makes this companion so good. Now, Wicked Strike is an actual AoE cone spell with only a two-second cooldown. So he constantly he's constantly casting this. So you're always going to have this 10% decrease on it, um, and you can't you can't pass it up. The 10 the 10 percent debuff on this is going to actually outweigh not having the third offensive slot on this. So, for instance, uh, if you have, and this does stack, so if you have three con artists in a group, that's going to be 30% uh, debuff on a target. Can't, you can't really pass it up. It's, it's, a great, it's a great companion. I love this companion. Now, there are going to be two other viable companions. Uh, and the first being the Air Archon. The Air Archon is a very cheap, good, solid, legendary companion. Uh, it has two ring slots, so you can um, choose any rings you want. And it also has a next slot. Now, this is a melee. Now, the Con Artist is melee, and he does die a lot too, but it's fine. He still works. Now, this is another melee. Uh, a lot of people do this because they can't afford the rest. So, if you can't afford to equip out some of the companions that you would like to have, uh, the Air Archon is a good choice. Uh, he procs your bondings fast enough. You know, he has all the correct stats for a Warlock. Uh, and the third and final option is if you can't afford, obviously, the Fire Archon is a very strong legendary companion. Uh, he does have the three offensive slots. He has two ring slots and a talisman. Now, this is where a lot of people can't afford it because the talisman, 
um, on Xbox right now, uh, the adorable Bites Talisman is like 10 million. It's like 10 million AD, uh, and it's going up in price. Uh, this is a ranged companion, though, so he will stay alive a lot longer, for instance, uh, rather than the Air Archon or the Karn Artist. But like I said, it becomes, do you really want to spend 10 million on a adorable talisman? And two adorable rings or sun rings or however you want to build your companion. Uh, like I said, the con artist you can't you can't pass it up. The ten percent debuff is just it does wonders. You will see a significant increase uh, in your DPS when running the con artist versus uh, one of your other companions. You will see a difference. All right, that's going to wrap it up for the companions. Let's uh, move on to the final topic, which is going to be the mounts. Uh, the mounts really haven't changed. You can use whatever equip power you want. Uh, I only have crit, defense, and power available. I have enough crit, uh, so I choose the power. Um, mounts are basically a bonus. You're going to want to pick a stat that you're lacking in. So if you're lacking in crit, then you want to put your crit on. Uh, if you're lacking in recovery, you want to put recovery on. Whatever you're lacking, you want to put uh, in here. So if you're using the Orca set and you notice that you need more armor penetration, you can put in a, uh, an Axe Beak for your power. Uh, now we're going to look into the stable here. Uh, this first one uh, is still a placeholder. Guys, I still don't have a legendary mount. Um, I can I can afford to buy a legendary mount. I just refuse to pay $20 million for a legendary mount. I will get one eventually, and it's going to be the Tenzer's Disc. Um, but for right now, a placeholder, I just have Warlord's Encouragement. It's just my summon companion does more damage. No big deal. Uh, Protector's Friendship is going to be 1% power and defense, uh, which stacks. And then we're still rocking two Protector's Camaraderies. And then a Calvary's Warning, which I will get a buff when I use my Mount Daily Power. Uh, this is all just bonus stuff. There are new... Uh, insignia bonuses out there that I am looking into, but nothing really catches my eye per se. Uh, I think this is still a pretty good solid setup for when I do get my legendary mount. And I believe that's it, guys. I believe we have gone over everything that we need to go over. Uh, like I said, be sure to check the description as all the links will be in there. There will be a written out link. Uh, for MMO Minds if you want to read and look at everything um, or if you want to uh, check out the rotation video. The rotation video will be very important on how to spell twist and all of that. And I will go more depth into the powers on there. So be sure to check out those videos. Uh, if you guys <clears throat> have any questions or comments or concerns, remember this is going to be the Soulbinder Damnation Mod 10 PvE build. Uh, like I said, it's not going to be the DPS that it used to be. However, you're still going to do a significant number you know, damage in dungeons. You will take at least top three in damage. I guarantee that. Uh, you might not take first every time. It depends on uh, who's in your group and item levels and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but you still are a viable aspect. Uh, your survivability is still going to be great. Uh, and your damage, like I said, is still still going to be good. It's not going to be the best. Uh, Hellbringer uh, Fury is going to out-DPS you uh, pretty much every single time. Uh, I will be doing and releasing a build and guide video on that as well. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, it, it basically comes down to your play style and how you want to play your Warlock. If you want to be survivy, tanky, kind of help out your group a little bit, then maybe the Damnation is going to be great for you. Uh, if you want to go full DPS mode, then you might want to look into switching over to Hellbringer Fury. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Like I said, be sure to smash that like button. Uh, be sure to share the video. Uh, I, I really want to say thank you to all you guys. You guys have been great. Uh, my Mod 9 video is almost up to like 120,000 views, which is just insane. It's absolutely insane. I never would have thought that it would have gotten that high. Uh, but people seem to like the way I do things and go through everything. So if you enjoyed this video, like I said, smash a like on it. You know, watch it. Uh, I will have timestamps below so you can always ping pong between things where you need to focus your attention on. All right, guys. I'll see you.